Locally Grown is an annual exhibition featuring a selection of original artwork from artists living in Apache and Navajo counties. Any artist over the age of 18 may enter artwork in any media. This year, the exhibition was juried by Shasta Kruger, a ceramic artist who uses clay to investigate ideas about cellular structure, accumulation, and repeated patterns. She lives, creates, and teaches in Salt Lake City, Utah. About the jurying process, Shasta says, it was an honor to see so many pieces of art and craft created by artists and makers eager to share their work. This exhibition shows a sampling of techniques and media, including drawing, quilting, ceramics, sculpture, and painting. Art and fine craft have long traditions of expression throughout human existence. Each piece is a form of self-expression, Collectively, those expressions connect and define a community. In addition to exceptional technique and design, I gravitated to work that seemed to capture a moment. A moment can be captured through a specific person, place, feeling, or sentiment. These moments define an aspect of the individual that together shapes a community. This work exemplifies thoughtful and creative voices within your community. Deborah Austin, Griffin Ranch Headquarters, Digital Photography. This photo is of the Griffin Ranch in Arizona that has been owned by three generations and dates back to 1902. This is the original headquarters. The small white shack was taken apart and moved to the different cow camps, then reassembled. The ranch will be handed down to a fourth generation. I have visited it often, but with the autumn leaves that turned golden, it was a photographer's dream. Anne Anspach, Wet Feet, Watercolor on Gesso. I was fortunate enough to be able to photograph these sandhill cranes in their breeding plumage and multiple poses one early May in Wyoming on a wetland before temperatures warmed enough to bring green grass. I was drawn to the negative shapes created by this composition. The work was started by creating a textured surface with gesso on a heavyweight illustration board. Watercolor was added by various techniques. I particularly liked the dripping effect in the darks as I felt it represented the wetness well. Elaine Mahaffey, Orange Blossoms and Pearls, Quilt, Fabric, Thread. This unusual quilting method was accomplished by creating strata of fabric and then cutting them at 60 degree angles. The result created a floral pattern interspersed with pearl shapes, utilizing a fabric with metallic accents. The pieces made with cotton, fabric, batting, and thread. Janet Fish, Almost Twilight, Watercolor and Monoprint. Terry Williams, The Little Chef, Watercolor. The Little Chef, his specialties are cookies and pancakes, but most of it ends up in his hair. Jessica Lambert, Chaotic Arrangement, Mixed Media. Arena Mortensen, Reflections, Black and White Paper, this is an idea that what is inside is more important than what is on the outside. When you have beauty on the inside, it transcends to the outside and creates a beautiful energy that people gravitate to.
Tina Butora, Sunflower Sabotage, Acrylic with Foil. Beth Conlin, Arizona Saguaro, Watercolor. Having acquired a degree in art from ASU, I have experimented with many different mediums throughout the years. I always return to watercolor. I enjoy the interpretation of the subject more than other mediums that create a more photographic one. I find the saguaro to be a dynamic subject. I often create its image in my work. Jody Moses, Two Gray Hills, Cotton Quilt, Quilted by Kathy Teeters. The Two Gray Hills quilt was made from a pattern by One Horse Studio. It is 83 inches by 95 inches, created in the strip piecing manner. I have always admired Navajo weavings and was glad to find a way to create this beauty. Jerem Lewis, The Twins, Watercolor. Water and sky speak to my senses and have the power to calm and make the world right when it seems to be out of sorts. This piece was inspired by the resulting emotion of late day light reflected on water. The birds add a sense of life and gliding motion to this quiet moment. The title points to the two birds in the scene and is in honor of my twin sister. Robin Bromley, Small Thoughts, Yarn and Frame. Weaving is a passion of mine. Whether it's done on my big floor loom, tapestry, or one of my several lap looms, the meditative motion of weaving threads and yarns over and under makes me very happy. I wanted to try a technique that when finished weaving, the piece would be finished as well. I came across some frames with matting and decided to try putting holes in the mat and try warping it up. Using different colors and textures of yarn, this piece, Small Thoughts, was created. Gerald Irving, Lady and a Prayer, Oil on Canvas. Jean Kuhn, Painted Desert Adobe, Digital Photograph, Metal Print. Arena Mortensen, Danae, The People, Graphite on Bristol Board. This work was created out of appreciation for wisdom we have much to learn from our progenitors who have gone before us. I hope when you look at this piece, you can admire her and think, what wisdom would you offer me? Jody Moses, Hopi Basket Quilt, Cotton Quilt, Quilted by Kathy Teeters. The Hopi Basket Quilt was made from a pattern by Southwest Style. It is 84 inches by 98 inches, created in the strip piecing manner. I enjoy the beauty and artistry of the native people in our part of Arizona and was very pleased with my rendition of their craftsmanship. Working with the talented group Card Tricks Quilt Guild has opened new adventures in quilting for me. Dwayne Krauss, Asia Bibby, Oil on Oak Board. This portrait is of Asia Bibby, a Pakistani Christian woman who was convicted of blasphemy by a Pakistani court, receiving a sentence of death by hanging and placed in solitary confinement in an 8 by 10 foot cell without windows at the Lahore prison from 2008 to 2019. The image is painted from a public domain photograph. Stuart Holmes, Red Wall, 
Long Canyon, Burr Trail, Digital Photography. Jerem Lewis, Far From Home, Watercolor. Having grown up in Sholo, there is something that excites me about being lost and alone in a big city. This piece is inspired by the energy of movement, rain, and distant buildings. The painting style is loose and fast. The title is in honor of my oldest daughter, who has traveled the world. Jocelyn McCleave, Sun-Kissed, Digital Photography. Bruce Taylor, Dead Horse Point West, Utah, Digital Photography. I have been doing photography for over 65 years. I love doing large scenic photos up to two by three feet using an inexpensive digital camera or even a cell phone by taking 10 or 12 overlapping photos of a scene and then merging them into one large photo using software on a personal computer. The Dead Horse Point photo was taken this past summer during a family vacation trip to the Moab, Utah area. Jessica Lambert, Urban Response, Mixed Media. Rebecca Rosnovac, Chicken Butter Dish, Clay, Slip, Underglaze, Glaze. I hand-built this butter dish out of clay as a part of the lower everyday use assignment in Ceramics 1. I wanted to build something that would reflect our whimsical farm animal themed kitchen, be something that would be used daily, and most importantly, store that treasured kitchen good called butter. I believe everything is better with butter and a bit of whimsy. Tammy Keen, From the Earth, Ceramic. From the Earth, this sculpture depicts that which was formed out of the clay of the earth, reaching towards its creator. We are the clay, and thou our potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. Isaiah 64, 8. Lee Mitchell, Cherry Blossom Vase, Clay, Slip, Glaze. The cherry blossom vase was created with hard and soft slab construction, incorporating negative space within both the handles and the legs to elevate the style of the basic vase shape. The design was engraved into a white slip and a final green translucent glaze was applied. This vase could stand alone or with the addition of a tall single branch or blossoms. Karen Lewis, Karenized Fox number two, ceramic. Wondering what Karenized means? The artist Karen making something that is unmistakably her own, usually to include many marks that fit together to make a pattern. The idea Karen had in mind for her piece, Karenized Fox number two, is for the viewer to hunt for information and stay engaged while doing so. The marks seen here are amplified with the help of two types of stains which sank deeply into the grooves. I hope you enjoy figuring out what you think this fella is thinking. Walter Bethune, A Woodpecker's Dream, Wood Spirals on Wood Base, Ceramic Woodpecker on a Branch. I have been making art since grade school, including sculptures, abstract paintings, and yard art. I have had several showings in California and in Sholo. From 2019 through 2021, I ran my own art gallery on Deuce of Clubs behind Chase Bank in Sholo. I'm sorry to say my health has declined, so I now create more small artworks that I call recyclables. I have won recognition with my recyclable objects at Navajo County Fair and the Arts Alliance of the White Mountains. Thank you for accepting a woodpecker's dream. I will keep doing art as long as possible.
Don Ostroff, Chicken Low, Clay Underglaze Glaze. Tammy Keen, Goliath, Ceramic. The surface of Goliath is influenced by the Aztec culture. The Aztecs used semi-precious stone mosaics to adorn skulls to honor the dead. The cuerda seca technique was used to imitate the stone mosaic. The Latin saying, memento mori, also plays into this piece. Remember we all die, not to forget how fragile are our lives. Goliath, a mighty Philistine warrior, was slain by a young shepherd, David. Robin Bromley, Wool Throw, Wool, Hand Spun, and Woven. I love working with fiber, and this piece allowed me to use several techniques of turning wool from a sheep into an item of warmth and beauty. The wool was spun on my spinning wheel, and then after deciding on colors and design, I warped my floor loom and wove this lovely fabric. It can be used as a throw or can be used as a wrap on a chilly evening. Elaine Mahaffey, The Quilter, Clay Glaze. This sculpture was hand-built in clay utilizing slab, coil, and pinch methods. It is enhanced with steel and thread. The finishes were accomplished with a variety of stains and glazes. The artist was making a memorial monument to celebrate the craft of quilting, which is multi-generational in her family, having learned the craft from her grandmother and passing it down to her son, granddaughters, and grandsons. Anne Anspach, Fight or Flight, Clay Underglaze Oxides Glaze. This clay sculpture was created thinking of the varying response to perceived danger by different animals and different humans. I was inspired by photos of a young man that made me think he could either be hastily rising to fight or to flee. I feel that eagles look a bit fierce in any pose, primarily due to the eyes and talons, so I tried to emphasize these attributes. It was very rewarding to see the concept melded into one sculpture. And now I'd like to share with you the award winners of this year's Locally Grown exhibition. Juror Shasta Kruger indicated that the pieces selected for awards exemplify craftsmanship of their medium and quality design. The first place award goes to Two Gray Hills by Jody Moses, which uses structured geometry and soft colors to create a balanced composition. The softness of material and design give a sense of community and connection. The second place award goes to the ceramic piece, Goliath, by Tammy Keene, which uses a defined and proportioned form balanced with a decorative surface. The human figure is relatable to all of us. This skull also portrays a bit of mystery. The third place award goes to Far From Home by Jerem Lewis. This watercolor painting uses muted tones and an atmospheric quality to capture a sense of wonder, excitement, and a bit of unease that a new landscape and environment can bring. Thank you to everyone who participated in this year's Locally Grown exhibition. Locally Grown is held each year, and each during experience is different. If you would like to participate in next year's exhibition and you have questions, please contact the gallery director.